The following podcast is a next level production. Let's get to the elephant in the room. The mainstream media won't leave it alone. Mm. How could you not know that Stormfront was a Nazi? Uh, well, okay. So, let me say it again, Cam. Um, <laughs> I may be a superhero, but I'm also just a man who fell in love with the wrong woman. Well, we all know what that's like. Right. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I'm not perfect, Cameron. Far from it. Uh, I, I know I'm bulletproof on the outside, but in here, this, it isn't. I'm just as human as all the rest of you. More with Homelander after this. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I am Rob. And this week, uh, we're going to be covering The Boys Season 3, Episode 1. Payback. Payback <laughs> of The Boys. So, uh, The Boys are back in town. Uh, <laughs> in a big way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Steve is on vac- currently on vacation right now, so uh, Rob decided he wanted to help us out and with this coverage of this particular episode. And uh, Thanks, Rob, for being on. Oh, my pleasure. So the synopsis for this, well, basically payback. We're they're they're getting some <laughs> sort of payback. It's a year later after the last incidents of uh, season two. Butcher has been sidelined. He has to deal with uh, his uh, dead wife's kid, which is not right. his. It's Homelander's. He's buddying up to the kid and uh, his former boss at that point, who's taking care of him. And on top of that, Huey is working for pretty much like the government, if you think about it. Correct. He walked away from the boys, is now in charge of this like uh, task force or this per- you know, this person in, in Congress. And uh, the boys themselves are, all of them are pretty much on hiatus. Uh, they're doing their own thing. And now we come into circumstances of what's going on. So, uh, oh, your overall thoughts, Rob, what, what did you like about the episode? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say this is one hell of a way to start a season three. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really is. Uh, so here's the fun, like the, so the episode starts, right? And the beginning of the episode has, you know, Charlie, Th- uh, Charlie's Theron. Yeah. Which shocked the hell out of me. Yeah. Same it here. seems like Charlie. Yeah. It, <laughs> seems, it seems like Charlie Theron really, really wants to be. In a superhero movie, because mm-hmm. she made her appearance in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the end scene on that. And, of course, you know, we all know that she was with uh, Will Smith on Hancock mm-hmm. as a as a type of superhero. Correct. But, yeah, all of a sudden I saw her and I was like, whoa, all right, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> so, yeah, it- so, that yeah, it was, it was actually very uh, – it was cool. Uh, and then that's when I noticed. I thought it was like a dream sequence, and then I and then that's when I noticed that it was one of their movies that I guess that they, they normally do. It, it was the movie that they started shooting le- in season two that they kind of shucked because of that Hail Hitler like person, <laughs> that was Stormfront that was there. Stormfront, yeah, yeah, and they they had to vote, had to vet her and get rid of her at that point. Correct. Which I make it makes a lot of sense for a corporation to do that. They want to separate themselves away from this. So it's like, okay. All right, we're gonna get rid of the brown-eyed brunette, gimpy little girl, and right. we're gonna get somebody that kind of looks more endearing to, I guess, the Aryan race. <laughs> uh, you know, blonde, light, blue eyed, blonde right. hair, blue eyed. <laughs> They're the Nazis. Now, mind you, they already have one on their side, which is Homelander. Right. And, and of all things. <laughs> and it's like, okay, let's obliterate it. So it's the whole story arc of, like, we had to get rid of yeah, Stormfront. Yeah, no, exactly. So they did that within film form, which is pretty cool. And I thought, wow, this was amazing. I love this idea. Okay, this is a story, and you can see it in Homelander's eyes as he's watching it on film. He's there in the audience watching this, yeah. and you can see a tear coming out of his eye. Well, it, what's interesting, too, is because you could tell that that's not how he feels. Oh, no, it's not, because he <laughs> says anti, <laughs> anti-Nazism to her in the, right. in the film, 
and he loves her dearly. Oh yeah. Uh, well, to some degree, uh, his love for himself. I think if you think about yeah. it, because we see things later on and episodes in the future regarding her but to me it, it was just like oh okay uh, i think one of the coolest part was uh during the film like uh, the premiere itself you see huey with starlight right and he has to stand there in on the red carpet you know homelander is giving mave the cold shoulder blah 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 and honestly I thought it was pretty funny. It's like, oh, okay, they're going through all these interviews, and then you can see Homelander kind of giving that look. But, you know, Starlight's like, hey, uh, back up or whatever. So he backs up right into Homelander. It's like, oh, it's right. kind of a Starlight you got there, kid. Like a, a catchphrase. <laughs> because it's like one of those like uncomfortable instances of like, yeah, we were put in this position and yeah now er yeah no he uh he like it's interesting how you know when you when you look at homelander and and of course you you look at homeland throughout the entire you know uh you know three seasons but when you look at homelander this is a person that is just a hair away from just losing it you know (laughs) losing it completely (laughs) and um and as a matter of fact i mean i know we're talking about the first episode here yeah and they already released three episodes, and and you watched the three episodes. I watched the three episodes, which we won't be getting into, but you could see where it, you know where at least it's heading to, yeah. which uh, which is very interesting. But this is a man that you could tell that it, there's just the, the actor's pretty good at showing how unhinged mm-hmm. this character is. Um, They're all afraid of I, him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, terrified! It is a terrifying. And, but what's funny is that the actor himself has gotten himself into real trouble oh yeah you know so and so you could he's probably a real psychopath and i don't know i mean no, i don't saying. think so <laughs> i don't, I think, don't so. think to that extent but the no, thing but is is he, that he, he's he, had his own issues and exactly and it's a way for him to convey <laughs> that at least on screen so Correct. that way it's like all right i made some mistakes but at least he's a little bit more humbled about it but in this case this person oh is no, super person is genetically yeah. engineered and and is not humbled in any way and has no remorse. No, he, he wants he wants to be loved. He wants to be he wants to be the center of attention. Love he or hated. Wants, huh? Love or hated. Yes. Yes. Love or hated. I mean that's what he wants. And but he just wants to be that center. He wants to be the number one. He wants to be like everybody's top priority and yeah. and that's what he wants and he feels like he could get away with that. You know, um, another part of the uh, that I like was the way the party in the beginning sets the tone for the rest of the season. Yes. <laughs> so that yeah. party. Uh, <laughs> uh, what did you think about that? <laughs> uh, the party or uh, the very beginning? Uh, the first thing I my takeaway was Colby Minifee as Ashley and her getting pounded by the director of the film in the bathroom <laughs> and him having to pull more hair. Now, mind you, the woman has already lost a lot of hair. Pull it right. out. and Yeah, no, she didn't want to pull the hair. Just pull, pull it out. out. Now, mind you, how much hair does this woman have? Is she wearing a wig at one point? Because she was already losing, like, hair as it was. Yeah, and exactly. And I, I, I love Kobe Minifee. She's a beautiful girl, uh, a woman. And on top of that, it's like the character is just like one extreme. Very, sh- like, meekish in front of people that are of super powered and things of that nature. Or the people that she works for. And then the next thing you know, when she's of her own power, she's empowered by herself and kind of shifts the power to the people below her and starts smacking them around. But in this case, it's like, wow, this is rough sex in a (laughs) men's bathroom stall. (laughs) And Huey seems to walk in on this. And no sooner after that, we we get, uh, of all things, Butcher showing up and you realize that Butcher is working for Huey now. And to me, honestly, that's a pretty cool thing. But the thing is, you could see that Butcher has been put in his place, as we know from the last season. So he's working for Huey and for this particular uh, team. He's hired out, and the team's been hired out by Huey and uh, what was it, the senator or something at that point? Uh, Yeah, um, what's her name? Um, uh, 
Oh, uh, I keep forgetting her name, yes. but uh, Nadia. So, Nadia, or uh, they call her something different at this point, too, in the show itself, if you remember. Um, I'm trying to remember her name. I'm looking it up as we speak. But I, I find it funny. But we also get some incidences of, like, with Queen Maeve and Homelander himself. He is right. not, because she keeps throwing that from the last season to him saying how he is unstable and how that video would get out. Even Huey states that. But uh, I, I find it funny, though, that, uh, uh, yeah, it's Victoria Newman. Is it not? Oh, is that what she's going by, Victoria Newman? Yeah, even though it's, okay. uh, she is known throughout the episode as Nadia that somebody keeps looking at for. Right. Um, but the thing is, is that, we got Butcher going out there, sent on it, and his team. We got uh, the Asian girl that, that can't speak. We got Frenchie. Right. Uh, Kamiko and Frenchie are there. Right. They're on a mission. They're going to see Termite, all that cool stuff. And Yeah, that's the party I'm talking about. I mean, like I said, it sets the tone for the entire Oh, yeah, I think it's the, the most series. extreme <laughs> thing. You, you, we, we already <laughs> know from the first two seasons, a lot of these soups are either extremely perverse uh, multi-sexual. We do see a lot of um, penis in the very <laughs> beginning, as it were. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, honestly, uh, you know, you got to give women their own too. And, you know, we've right. seen a lot of women nude throughout the years. But in this case, we get a lot of male nudity, which is fine. We, we've seen it, in uh, of all things, American Gods as well. And uh, certain shows like that. But the funny thing is, is that Termite could go from, like, Ant-Man to Giant-Man in a heartbeat. Right. And, right. and in this case, he's got a lover, and he wants him to go through his penis. <laughs> or his ass. <laughs> and At first, that's what I thought. I thought it was going to be like, oh, you know, he was going to do some anal stuff. And then all of a sudden, you see, you know, the... Giant, the tip of the, the tip, man's, right. gen, you know, his genitals <laughs> or penis, and he jumps through it. But... You, you, there was a bit of foreshadowing within that particular scene. Now, mind you, we're probably jumping into all our top fives, but we don't care. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> uh, right now, this is a casual conversation. But the fact that is he jumps right into it, and you see the tip, and you see the hole, and he goes <laughs> into it. He walks into it. And the guy is like, and he's touching the sides. He's having a good time. And... If you guys are really disturbed about this, sorry, but this is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about the episode as it is. He's getting all excited, the guy that termites inside, but then you get the sneezing. He right. sneezes and he becomes big because he already <laughs> did a bump of coke. He blows him up. And he blows him up and he splits him in half. And then Kamiko sees him, Frenchie sees him, they're trying to stop. And it takes Butcher to come in with a bag of blow and throw oh the termite inside there. Just it was <laughs> that was one of the funniest parts. He just grabs him, shakes him in there. Yeah, shakes him in there. <laughs> and last thing you want him to do is to sneeze again and be huge with a right. small little baggie. But you know he could suffocate. All he has to do is pull the ziplock over, and he's good and done. But yeah, yeah apparently the. It was contained, according to what Huey says to uh, Victoria Newman. Right. So, and you could tell that Butcher, I mean, one, you could tell that Butcher does not like the idea that Huey's the one that he has to take orders from sometimes. Well, yeah, because Butcher was he always was the, one. the one that was in charge. And exactly. Huey is always this, you know, the lapdog that needs to be taught. He's the, Correct. He's the junior. Now... You know, Butcher is working for the government, as it were, as some sort of uh, secret team. Right. And, you know, it, it's hard for him because he has to take orders. Correct. Yeah. No, he, not only has to take orders, but then he's been out on this, you know, of course, uh, revenge of, you know, trying to kill all these people with a uh, with powers and. The fact that they told him, you know, you can't kill him, you know. So he was about to kill, you know, a uh, termite, and then he had to like hold off. He you know? held and back. You could, yeah, you could tell that, you know, he was just so frustrated with that. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, so that yeah, this is another man that's also 
unhinged himself. <laughs> so you've seen like two you've seen like the two spec one with powers and the one without one wants revenge the other one wants you know to be adored or whatever it is and feared but you could tell butcher is like you know his his whole thought is because of everything he's gone through the, in the past yeah. is hey you know I, I need to get rid of all these people you know <laughs> i need to exact revenge on what they did to me so yeah it's really weird in the sense that like the power struggle is there and you know, it's there, but we do get a change of that in future episodes at this point. Right. But the fact is, is that Huey's in charge right now and put your ass to listen to him. And, yeah. <laughs> and of all things too, I, I saw, uh, if you look at the scenes with Victoria Newman and Huey, there's a bit of flirtation in there. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, you can are- tell they're like, just, Best kind of, you know, best buds kind of thing. And yeah, that type of, you know, that type of stuff. I mean, the the whole bagel thing I thought was funny. Yeah, especially with the fact that she has to eat his food. And yeah, I, I and <laughs> on top of that, it's like even Starlight's not even quick to understand that or see that at certain right, times. Right. You know, it, it's a whole different life for Huey. He's involved with the government for this and. He's following suit with or whatever Victoria gives him. And I just love that aspect. It's kind of like you're my boss, but we're kind of working together. Okay, we have this relationship, and it's kind of hard to deal with. Yeah. Uh, but mind you, Huey does not know that she is a super herself that could kill with her mind. Correct. And that was one of the things that, uh, you know, just seeing him, how shocked he was when he saw that. Yes. Um, you know, and I know we're jumping all the way to pretty much almost the end of the episode when that happens. But yeah, um, yeah, just the fact that 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 was actually I have to I mean, it's funny how um, I, I have to ask. I mean, I was like, if I wish I could kneel somebody in the production, I was like, hey, how much of your budget is just buckets of blood? Fake blood? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> For the fact that the amount that they use. <laughs> <laughs> exactly wow yeah it's like it borders <laughs> on a horror movie at that point with this particular oh, no, show it's just it, the amount of you know like the 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 beginning you know like i said in that party and then of course that fight at the end yeah you know, all of a sudden you know it just wasn't like the hand or the face it was just like the entire body disintegrates yeah yeah uh <laughs> it's very like the claw scene not the claw scene, the claw, the girl, when she smacks uh-huh. the guy in the first season's head. Yes. Between yes. her legs. Like she used, using a, him as like a thigh master or something. And, correct. Yeah. And then there was uh, A Train when uh, he was going so fast. He, uh, I think that's a, uh, wasn't that Huey's. Uh, that was Huey's girlfriend, girlfriend in the first that season. He obliterated. <laughs> <laughs> and all he was I left mean, was two hands. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> This is like like I said, great effects in this uh in this show, and I've this one like ju- like I said, just jumping into this season with this one episode, I thought it was phenomenal. I mean, just all the uh, it it definitely brought back all, you know because I haven't seen it in a while, yeah. So I didn't go back and watch the other two uh, seasons, but it as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh yes, I, this is the reason I love this show. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is, is it's so extreme and so wacky, and the comic itself is just as wacky. They kind of adapted it for right. the uh, for the Amazon Prime show, and they've done such a good shot of like just shot, not for shot for shot, but they've had certain scenes that were shot for shot. Were they? I yeah. mean, I never seen. I I, I and it's funny because you know, um, I I did a little visit to my uh, comic book shop today. Yeah. And they had the trade paperbacks of the uh, the boys, and I didn't realize how many. Oh, there are a lot. Um, there are a lot, <laughs> and this was. And he was he was telling me that I think this was back in two thousand seven or something, mm-hmm. or two thousand, you know, when it first came out. So I, I didn't realize it was that old, and I didn't realize that they you know they had that many um, issues out, and yeah. So, but he was telling me it was like, oh yeah, it's been around for a while, and so. I'm finally getting, you know, caught up, <laughs> caught up on it. Just like it's the same thing, like the Invin- uh, Invincible. Yeah, Invincible's been around for a long time. I actually have a long time too. Yeah, yeah, I've had that. I have the last ten issues of the the last ten issues that it came out for Invincible. And when Jamie and I mm. covered that, 
in the right. coming weeks because that's coming back as well. Uh, yeah, they it's been around for such a long time, and oddly enough, that was Robert Kirkman's real first foray foray into comics, other than The Walking Dead. Right, right. Uh, uh, he got greenlit for Walking Dead, and then he was doing Invincible, but Invincible ran longer and faster with all its comic issues. And that, by means, if they did that as a live action, if they originally wanted it to do it like a live action, originally they wanted to do right. it, it would have been so much harder to do. And the budget oh, yeah. would have been so crazy, but at least with uh, anime or animation or cartoons, they could easily do it and do, and with the budget as it is, they could do whatever the hell they want. Oh, no, let me tell you, I enjoyed it as an uh, as an animation because, and it's funny because i seen some, um, some reviews on Amazon about it, and there was this one person <laughs> that gave it a one star saying, I can't believe the gratuitous violence and this and that. I was like, it's not meant for kids. And it's not meant for kids. Yeah, Jamie and I both state that before we actually start recording. Yeah, because when we did the first season, we said that, and she goes, "This is not for your kids. Do not watch this with your kids." But but it says it in the beginning of the show. (laughs) Yes, so (laughs) I I, uh, people just don't get it. They they think that (laughs) cartoons are cartoons, but yet, yeah, we grew up on. Remember with uh, oh uh, the, uh, Wile, uh, the Wiley Coyote and yeah the, the you know Road the Runner. Warner Brothers yeah uh, Bugs Bunny yeah. and you know Daffy Duck and that stuff was like violent that. for its time too but in this case they show blood. Listen, not only was it violent, it was also so racist. <laughs> oh, that too. It's a, it was a different age, but if you look at what's going on within this particular show, there right. is a bit of kind of not racism. It's anti anti supersism or whatever it is, right? Because they're against people who have powers, and these people are not responsible for getting these powers. It's either their parents feeding them some sort of drug, and then they're being isolated by society itself, or being used by the government, as it were, or some company, right? So, exactly. So, so it has its own kind of following within itself. And, you know, they don't talk about religion. Um, A lot of it is based upon, you know, politics to some degree. A lot of it has to do a lot with a lot of meta with what's going on in the world as far as media and how they're being used and utilized. And a lot of it is meta in reference to what we deal with today. And I think that's really what everybody is attracted to because they see realism in what's going on today. Right. Now, right. Mind you, if no, we exactly. did really have any superhuman people, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the whole thing. Like, you know, and th- talking about that, like, you know, like, uh, it's interesting how you see Vought, you know, yeah. wheeling and dealing with the government and trying to phase out. Cause he's, they're try- he's trying to, f- Stan is trying to phase out the superheroes. Yes. He basically just wants to like, Hey, Here's uh, what they call V24, because they're only, it's supposed to only last 24 hours. Correct. And, you know, and and it, w- it was so funny how, like, the, the gov- that government uh, person that he was talking to is saying, so you're telling me it lasts 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I got so many, you know, I got... I got so many soldiers and, you know, so, so many missions throughout, you know, what is it, uh, in a week and then in a month. So, you know, you could tell this is going to be like a billion dollars that this company will make every month. From the government themselves. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, so, and he'd rather do that than playing, you know, babysitter to a bunch of uh, soups. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially, you know, Homelander, who is just a spoiled brat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, and he, he is like the extreme, well, he's like Superman on crack. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Which, you know, I have to say, uh, for a person who's in charge, it's amazing how Stan can get away with what he does. And I'm sure at some point, Homelander is going to probably fry his head off. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but, but, you know, it's that, that's, and speaking about how, you know, how bold Stan was, um, the fact that, uh, trying to, you know, put a foothold on him and he makes Starlight co captain. <laughs> And it just, you know, you can see in his face that he is just about to lose his shit. Yeah. Uh, I 
I feel that too. And honestly, Anthony Starr is doing such a great job as playing Homelander, if you think about it. Right, right. I think he's awesome. The fact that they want to have the deep back of all things in the seventh. And they keep <laughs> pushing for this. Now, mind you, Starlight, you know, if you look at Aaron Moriarty's uh, portrayal of Starlight in this, you know, she feels like a rape victim. Yes. And as we progress, obviously, within the next two episodes, we see this. He's brought in, and they're kind of prepping him to come back. And right. they have this whole uh, reality show that they're working on, as we know. <laughs> we don't see this until the very end of this particular episode, how they're working it out. And her, you know, from the church school or church group. That they all that belong she was to. was from, right. And uh, somebody she knows is there. And we get that. And it's like, oh, her form, her lover, or... It uh, was like her... It was, uh, first they were boyfriend, young. They if were you kid, think right, about First it. boyfriend, yeah. yeah. And to me, it, it's like, okay. it To her, she's still a little bit innocent. But she's put in this crap show of a world between Homelander is, su- is the super psychopath. It's literally right. Superman on crack. Uh, you got rapey Aquaman that's going to be brought <laughs> back in. And you got A-Train who can't really do anything. He's just a figure piece because in the very beginning, him taking that picture with Huey was hilarious. Right. Uh, I thought that was hilarious to watch. Uh, I thought it was funny. Oh, and uh, when they were doing the uh, the red carpet the uh, red in carpet the beginning. The red carpet premiere. Yeah. It's like, who would have thought? Yeah, make a smile. <laughs> it's like, it's like, but mind you, A Train has no powers at this point. He's just a figure. Well, he piece of does. Face. He just can't use it because, because he blow he... out his heart. <laughs> right, exactly. He might actually die and stuff, so he can't use it. So he hasn't been uh, like you know. It was funny because how he was. He's I guess you know he has to have thirty thousand calories per day. Yes. So I guess he eats a lot. Yeah. And because he hasn't been running, he's been gaining a little weight, and that's when you, again another part of Homelander where he sees that he's gaining weight. Yep. And he grabs him, and his eyes start to light up, you know, to probably, like, almost fry him. And you can see the terror in A-Train's face, you yeah. know, face and everything. And you you say to yourself, man, I mean, this guy really just wants to let loose. Yep. But everyone, I mean, A-Train, the way he just, you know, he was horrified. Right there, he was just terrified at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> it was, you know, A-Train, you know, he's a funny guy. Like, I like his character. But, um, yeah, that was just one of those things where... You could see what it, it's interesting how this show it shows like you know it, of course all these characters are based off characters that we already know Superman Wonder Woman yeah it's kind uh, of ju- the Justice League if they were real people in the real world and have like, their own issues Maeve is a lesbian which a lot of people always made fun of Wonder Woman being as a lesbian correct which would be fine by me I don't care she's a glamazon or Amazon. She could have all the women she wants. She's a beautiful woman and right. very powerful. Honestly, I don't see anything wrong with it. But apparently there's some sort of shame within that, within this world. Right, uh, not right. just in ours, but even in this comic book world. Now, mind you, they think it would devalue her because of Vought. Right. Uh, then on top of that, you got... Of all things, Homelander, who's like, because Vought's in trouble, uh, not in trouble, but very much in charge of, like, the production, the value of these characters, uh, putting it on a lunchbox, put it on a, on a toy, a comic book, some sort of, uh, yeah, marketing. It's marketing all about the marketing and how they there. can make money off of it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting how, like, they have a, uh, what is it? A, um, a rating system on these uh, superheroes. Yep. And, you know, and of course, you know, uh, Homelander, of course, is, you know, his ratings went down because of Stormfront. And so by partnering him with Starlight, Starlight yeah. as, car- as co-cat, who has the highest ratings ever, uh, they think that they can now, you know, try yeah. to bring his ratings up in order for them to capitalize off of that. Yeah, which- and to me, that it, it, it kind of shows true to what we see daily now. Correct. If you look on YouTube, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, everything is a popularity. TikTok. It's all about yeah. popularity, getting your numbers, 
and making Correct. sure you're 100. How many people? How many likes you get? Yes. How many people subscribe? How many people you know uh, tune in? All these things, all these matrices, you know that you get. Listen, man. I mean, if you do a YouTube video, <laughs> you could see through YouTube who has watched it for how long has watched it. You know, in yeah. what country it was watched, and what device it was watched. All these things. And, you know, so that's the world we live in now. Mm -hmm. And it seems like this is exactly the same thing. But like I was saying, you know, it's like, you know, so since these characters are so familiar to us, we keep thinking it's like, because we, I'm sure we have always said, what if Superman was to lose control? What if, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What if Flash, you know, all of a sudden, you know, like all these characters just became the opposite of who they portray in the comic books. And that's what the boys does very well. I mean, it just yeah. shows, okay, this is what happens when you we, have. We kind of got that if you were brought up the wrong <laughs> way or you were brought up to a point with the movie Brightburn, if you yes. remember it. And you Phenomenal and I spoke movie. about this yeah. at work. Yeah. And we, we talked about it in length. And actually, Steve and I had covered Brightburn when it first came out. And it's literally if, what if Superman was brought up and he was bad. Now he was you, just a bad kid, no matter how you you know. Because you know, let's yeah. be honest. You know, you could have a family of five, all of them turned out well, but there's always that one kid that turns out bad. Yeah, and, and then no matter what you do, and no matter how much you try to you know instill your you know your beliefs and you know and have him become a good person, he still becomes a bad kid. He's just a rotten little kid. So yeah. that Brightburn was the same thing. It was like no matter how good his parents were. He was just fucked up. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so. Uh, to continue on, there was like a couple of other scenes that I liked. Uh, one was with Mother's Milk when he goes to his kid's birthday party. Now, we mm -hmm. know that he separated from his wife and his kids. Uh, there's somebody there, I think, was it the director of the film that was with his ex wife? It could be. I don't know. I, not, I, I forgot. I, it, se it seems like that's what it was. I mean, I forgot too. I, it just, they just look familiar. It they just like so familiar. And I'm like, was that the same one that was plugging <laughs> Ashley in the bathroom? <laughs> and I'm like, so. and on top of that, he's dressed as Homelander, kind of all geeky like with his four eyes with the glasses. Right. And uh, and it's a whole soup thing. And you could see in Mother's Milk's face how he is. And he's like, um, I don't want to be here. But he's, you see his OCD when he's fixing out all the cakes and stuff yeah, like that. And the, uh, yeah, he's doing the, uh, what is it, the plastic wear. He's just putting it very, Everything you know. meticulously, uh, you know, accordingly for every setting. And uh, it, was, it was very true to who he is. Right. And I think at the very end we figure out it's like he's back with the boys. So uh, I'm glad that we got an introduction for each. Not only did we get that with Kimiko and uh, Frenchie. Right. And then we got Butcher back involved. We also get Huey coming back as well. But, you know, Butcher playing the typical using the C word constantly. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and he, they, they have to listen to Huey at this point. And right. they're taking orders from Huey. And you can see it, it's like Butcher is like biting his tongue every time. Uh, those scenes to me were the best. That that we get now, mind you, listeners. Yeah, this is not a regular, typical top five, but uh, we're we're just talking out of context. It's a little bit out of format. Uh, Steve's away, so we'll, boys will be at play. So that's what Rob <laughs> and I are doing for now. We'll get back to regular format at a certain point because uh, apparently I watched the wrong episode because I watched all three. So I, I did the same thing. As a matter of fact, I had like one of the quotes that we were going to do. I, I had it from episode two. And when I watched it again, I was like, wait, that quote's not in there. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> so this is like kind of a free form idea, throwing out our top feelings of or, or yeah. scenes that we see and what we're looking at. Uh, I'm also live steving it as, as we're talking. So I have it right in front of me as I'm watching and looking at Rob. But. <laughs> I'm remembering every instance, you know, the, uh, the, the knee jumping from butcher as everybody else is talking about Huey and how he doesn't want to deal with the situation. Yeah. Uh, all those things that are starting to build up. I, he still has that relationship with his, uh, wife's kid. It's not his kid. It's Homelander's kid. It's he, Homelander, yeah. Yes. And he's trying to be the father figure, which I found that very interesting. He's like, all right, he's trying to be this. 
he, he but he's that's a to testament sure to his old wife because he exactly. loved her so much. But he also has that video of Homelander when Homelander was killing those people on the airplane. Yeah, and he's no. got that in his in his head too, and he it's like kind of burning a hole in his head, and he has to deal with the fact that okay, this is not my kid, but he's a part of my my wife. You know, it's her right. child, but I loved her, and that there's a part of her in there. And then, yes, I have to take care of this kid. And yeah, no, he he's unhinged too in his own way. But like I said, you know, he he's trying to be that good father figure because he knows if he lets Homelander, you know, uh, raise this kid, this kid is just going to be another version yeah. of Homelander. You know, so so yeah, no, interesting. Um, I also find that uh, one, another one of the things that I found interesting is the fact that, hey, you know, uh, they're trying to now search for Soldier Boy <laughs> or what killed him because they figured I didn't know that Soldier Boy was uh, was as powerful as Homelander. I Same guess. here. I didn't get that either. I, right. I, I so, didn't but they it. made it seem like that's what it was and that whatever killed him can kill Homelander. So that's also interesting to see and how they're going to actually, you know, how this is going to unfold. You know, within the next, you know, within the next few episodes or throughout the entire season, to see how that's gonna, you know, what's gonna happen and how they actually figure that out. So I thought that was very, that was a very cool thing that they put in there. Yeah. And who else is in this? Um, forgetting his name, he was in Breaking Bad. He's also oh, um, uh, Juan Carlos Esposito. Yeah, Juan Carlos Esposito is being part of the head of Ot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stan. His name is Stan, Stan something. Yeah. So Stan getting involved, and you could tell his disposition with being in charge of these people. Right. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he just seems like he wants to get rid of these superheroes because he wants he wants a company to be a pharmaceutical company and a government agency or something or like that. Or a government or, or, supplier or, or, for these right, drugs. Or a contractor yeah. or something like that, right. Yeah, and he, he feels like he's babysitting. <clears throat> these soups all the time and yeah and it's not the best thing that's meant for this particular uh company yeah right. he, he's a company man he's one of those people to think of money he's not there to babysit any of these people <laughs> and on top of that the fact that the way it's been exploited all this time now mind you that was because of the person that was before him which was elizabeth shoe right and as we all know died <laughs> is she's gone and that was done yeah. due to homelander and last season we had that whole whole thing with homelander sucking on a guy's boob <laughs> that looked like <laughs> her because he was a chameleon and it was a yeah no exactly wacky that, that thing. was yeah again you know it's 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 the way this show goes every time you think they they could not top what they did before the next thing you know you either watch the next episode or in this case next season comes up and yeah. you go oh okay they really are uh <laughs> they're not holding back at all this time <laughs> well th this i think this had to delay due to covid because of the filming mm -hmm. and everything they had to do plus the writing they had to make it work and and for the them to make it work they had to be in close quarters honestly it's it's one right. of those particular shows that had to have the delicacies within it you, we had to be very delicate in how we portrayed and how we created this. So you can do anything from distances. You literally had to be up and close with these particular characters, these particular actors. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, you know, it's like, and we got more investigative with some of them, uh, especially like with the deep and his book deeper and him and his <laughs> crazy wife at that point coming out of right. their, "Quote unquote Scientology life, as it were, right? And him being unfolded, and then it's kind of thrown under the carpet a little bit for the first episode. Mm -hmm. But uh, they kind of concentrate on uh, a reality show with the next seven character that they could pull from this reality show. People that are supers. Now we touched on it a little bit. One of them we mentioned was." Starlight's old boyfriend that she lost her virginity to, and right, and then there was other people that have powers because Vought usually, you know, as we knew from the first two season seasons, they actually um, had stuff out there where people got their powers from, like 
cereal right. or whatnot. Yeah, they they somehow secretly put you know this formula out there um, that uh, uh, compound V, I guess is what they call it. Yep. And there are a whole bunch of supers out there that are you know that are just starting to like all of a sudden show up. Yeah, and now so. they could you could audition depending on your power. <laughs> Right. So I, I guess Frogman at this point is not one of those because nobody wants a guy with big eyes and flippers in their hands. <laughs> but uh, they they get the most people that are appealing to the public, kind of like a boy band. And well, it's the whole yeah. you know it's the whole thing like you know because again it's a it's a reality show and just like every reality show out there you know when you watch uh, what is it like. Um, who wants to be? I don't know. Uh, like, uh, what a is bachelor? it? Uh, Amer- a bachelor, America's top model. All the. It's always about these beautiful people that are yeah. on screen. And let's be honest. You know, reality shows are not really reality shows. They're still scripted. But Correct. the point is that this is just another way of showing. Hey, you know, if we had you know superheroes, this is exactly how it would be too. You know, let's get the beautiful superheroes uh, on the screen, and then I'm sure they're going to vote them into whatever you know contents they're in. You know, how they win is by voting on the one that's either more good looking or whatever. The one that fits the profile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, you're not going to see the Jersey Shore of these people. <laughs> <At this point>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what a show that was. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you just bought some bad memories. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, they're trying to make it. They're trying to come back. <laughs> oh, please, oh, God, no. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so no, I thought that was good. And then, like I said, you know, Butcher, like when uh, Maeve gave uh, Butcher the uh, the V24 mm-hmm. uh, capsules, you could tell because, you know, I remember Stan said, well, you know, it's still being tested. But you could tell they're like, oh, it's supposed to be temporary after 24 hours. No side effects, nothing like that. And when he said that, I was like, sure. Sure. Right. What? <laughs> Why does that sound like it's a bunch of bullshit? You, know? you might so- have some burning when you're urinating. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, right. <laughs> but no, it's like it's one of those things where you could see that butcher, you know, he was about to throw it out and then he um, tossed it he, in uh, the, the, the cookie jar for the dog. In the cookie jar, and I'm saying to myself, Yeah, not only is he gonna take it, and of course I think we all know he will because I, I think the coming attractions and yeah, and they the show, it. show him. Yeah. yeah. But what the consequences on that are, you know, is going to be, you know, what, what's going to happen to Butcher after he takes that? I think how, he you know, goes to true Homelander at that point. Probably. That's he probably my will. feeling yeah. is that you're going to see Homelander on Homelander. You're going to see right. a Homelander that is pristine, pretty, Nazi, blonde hair, blue eyed. Then you're going to have <laughs> Billy Butcher using every C, F word, S word, <laughs> everything. He's going to be expletive deleted everywhere no, he, right <laughs> As he's, he's, gonna, he's shooting out everything he's at him. gonna be the, the he's gonna be the crude most um <laughs> <laughs> you know he I, I can't wait to see what happens you know when that you know when he re- when he finally takes it so that's gonna be very interesting it's gonna be very interesting and how he has to hide it from his friends uh the one th- topic that we didn't really get onto, which uh, we only topped on it for a little bit, was about Stormfront herself. We do see her. She is alive. She is in the hospital within this particular episode. She's Correct. burned, scarred. She has, what, no arm? She's missing an arm. She's missing her right arm. And a leg or two or something. I'm, I'm not sure about you. Right. But then she has, like, half her face seems to be burnt burnt away. Or, you know, yeah. Yeah. And then on top of that, we we get the whole uh, storm uh, Homelander coming in, talking to her, and as he's talking to her, he's making the whole conversation about him, yeah, not about her, about <laughs> him, exactly about oh, I need this love and attention, and it was her birthday, and he made it all about <laughs> himself. Right, it's me, 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 and me, you. me, 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 and. <laughs> Oh, I love you. You're so great. Bye, bye, bye. And he walks out. And she goes like, huh? <laughs> and, you know, I was like, oh, I, I guess the, the Nazi regime didn't really come in her favor, too, because nobody came to her side in the hospital, exactly. you know? <laughs> no, exactly. Well, I mean, uh, do, does the public know? I guess the public does know that she she's still alive. Well, they don't. They, I guess they sort of know that she's still alive, but 
the fact that they don't know that she's trying to, you know, secretly giving Homelander a hand job with that one left hand. <laughs> and, and the fact that it's not even working for them. Oh, oh my, my God. goodness. It's like, it, it's all about him. I, yeah. I, I feel so bad for her, even though she's crazy. She's corrupted. She's a Nazi, but it's like everything is all about him. He's like, oh, I can't finish whatever. See you. Bye bye. And then he walks out. Well, <laughs> yeah, but and it's because, of course, she's talking about, you know, um, him, you know, still, you know, trying to, you know, uh, come up with the Aryan nation and trying to, you know, yeah. make sure that, you know, like the whole Nazi thing. And he's like, no, no. Why are we, why do we keep talking about that? <laughs> you know? Well, so you saw his distaste for it too in the very beginning during the movie because right. he kind of winced when it was brought up when he was doing his lines towards Charlize Theron as right. Stormfront and it's like oh okay but I think I think Homeland uh, so when I when I see it I think Homelander is not a Nazi in that way no I think it's more he sees the entire human race bowing to as, him, bowing to him as just beneath him. Yes, everybody is worthless to him. Correct. It it's, it doesn't matter what race you're from. It doesn't to him everybody, and that's what I see from him because he's like, oh no, I'm not a Nazi, or you know, I don't want to play that. But for him, it's like, no, no, it's not. It's not that <laughs> I, you know, it's not that I just hate you know Jews, blacks, all that. No. I hate everyone. everybody. <laughs> everyone. Because I'm not even a real human. Yeah, yeah. At this point, it, it's very yeah. much like uh, if you think Invincible. Yes. Yeah. Think about the father in Invincible. Yeah. No. Exactly. You know, he he in the beginning he puts a good you know front, and then but in the end he just sees as the human race as you know whatever. I forgot. Not, you know, I got to go back to watching Invincible again, but I forgot. I think it was just to uh, what is it to harvest. Earth or something. Yeah, like it was that, literally or? to harvest Earth and get rid of it and just use Earth for a resource. Right. And uh, humans were, con you know, conceived or thought of by the Viltrumite as pawns for their own needs. Now, mind you, he winds up having a child with a human, <laughs> exactly. but that was to extend his seed into that world, and that's how we right, get invincible. Right. So, and yeah, and we get the same thing in the way with Homelander, where it's like he just sees the world as just people that should be bowing to him. Yeah. And, and like like I was saying before, he, it's all about him, but it's just that's he's, I don't see him as the Nazi that she wants him to be. No. I see him as just somebody that feels that he's like a god and everybody should be just, you know, catering to him. And she doesn't see that. All she sees is. You know, hey, it's the Aryan nation, you know, or it's, you know, uh, you know, if we have kids, they're going to be beautiful and powerful <laughs> and, <laughs> and perfect. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, all right. Well, let, let's skip ahead because uh, we already know what's coming to head. There, there was already a, a scene that uh, we kind of talked about slightly. Homelander and Butcher themselves, a confrontation with Butcher and Homelander. And Butcher's uh, apartment. So about the boy. Yeah, you know what? It's funny. Uh, so, like you said, you know, we we kind of strayed from the uh, from the format here. Yeah. Um, and one of the top fives that I was gonna do on you know on my takeaways on that was that part right there. Homelander okay. having a conversation with Butcher in his house, and the question I keep asking is, was it real? Or something Butcher made up imagined. in his mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was I, real. I do think it was real because it's it seems to me that Homelander is so much attached to that kid mm -hmm. that he will seek out Butcher no matter where he is. Try to have that relation with the kid because he can't even get to that kid because nobody would tell him right. where he is. So it's like Butcher his even though as much as he hates Butcher, it's the extension that he has to that kid. Right. And I don't know, because like, so here, here's an interesting thing that I think the filmmakers did. Mm -hmm. It was that while he's sitting there and they're all they're both talking to each other, Butcher all of a sudden looks over to the cookie jar. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's just a slight look. And then he looks forward and there's no 
Homelander. Yeah, he's gone because and he flew out the window. And, right, and you don't hear him fly out the window. You don't hear him like you know, like a whoosh or something like that. It's just nothing. Nothing there, and it right is nothing there. So. And you know how, you know, uh, with other, you know, superhero shows and stuff like that, if somebody's going to fly very quickly or leave the room very quickly, there's somehow there's some kind of sound effect yeah. or some kind of effect where, like, you know, you see wind or things moving because of the, you know, how fast a person left. Mm-hmm. In this case, it was just, he just seemed to disappear. And, but you're wondering, okay, was it real or was it not real? Or was it all in Butcher's head is like you think. Right. Okay. Exactly. Was it in his head? Was it like, huh. he's just that fucked up in his head that he's having this conversation with him and i was like huh that's at first i thought it was real yeah but then that that little part in the end where he just all he did was slightly look to the to the right and then he looked forward and he was gone and to butcher it wasn't like oh you know he left or something like that butcher just kind of carried on with the same facial expression that he had yes so i'm like was it like so it'd be interesting to see in the next few episodes you know if that happens again um whether it was imagine you know an imaginary thing or was it a um uh, a thing where you know homelander does give him a few visits once in a while yeah. so <laughs> but yeah no that was uh that was really interesting on that one <coughs> Well, uh, next up would be Huey on his way out of the FBSA. Um, he's leaving the offices. Mm-hmm. And he's following, uh, what was it, Victoria Newman. And right. he's following the same guy that was calling out, Nadia, Nadia. Yeah, his guy's uh, name is Tony or something like yeah, that. Yeah, his name is Tony. And he follows her to the street, down the alley, down behind... And this whole this whole encounter between Victoria Newman slash Nadia and this guy Tony, mm-hmm. and they have this whole thing. She hugs him, and then next thing you know, she basically destroys the crap out of him. And yes, apparently, he uh, has uh, superpowers as well. Correct. So, and they mention uh, so Tony like mentions Red River. Mm-hmm. And so, and of course he wants to expose that and she does not, but then she tried to trick him and say, okay, sure, we're going to do it. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting when he was attacking her, she blows up his hand. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be the end of it. Same here. <laughs> I, but no, she blows up his whole face. And she blows up the, like the bottom part of his face, which like he's laying there with no jaw, this gaping <laughs> wound and no eye. I was like, my God, man, these guys are just like, the, these filmmakers are just really going for it. Oh, yeah. And then, and then she just blows him up and it's just a, it's just this mist of blood. It's a everywhere. splatter <laughs> of blood and flesh all over the place. And Huey's behind the dumpster screaming his head off like a little girl. Yeah. And it's raining men. Hallelujah. Which is his first, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but is but you could, like, you know, because Huey didn't know that she has superpowers, but now that he does, you know, it's like yeah. that shock is it's like, whoa, what the fuck, you know? So Exactly. And, and the next two episodes will pretty much, you know, show, you know, the uh, what happens because of that, but... um. Yeah, very cool scene, and all of a sudden she calls somebody. And she's like, "Hey, I need a cleanup crew." Yeah, yeah, that, that's <laughs> so, the one weird thing is it's like it's kind of like uh, damage control from Marvel. It's like, hey, yeah. <laughs> we need a cleanup crew right now uh, instead of like a whole exactly. city. It's going to be just this one person. Uh, get a mop in a bucket. Get Charlie over yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> it's the whole John Wick. You know, come in, clean up the house, oh, the and here's from like Pulp f- Fiction. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. oh man, I oh, mean, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It's such a great movie. Oh yeah, same here. It's, it's one of those cool movies you have to watch every once in a while. But yeah, Kaitel as as oh, who he is, <laughs> he's awesome. He's awesome. <laughs> All right, I, so, I think we covered this hugely within this particular episode. It's pretty yeah, funny. No, let me tell you, it was a great episode to start with. Really left you, um, uh, you know, wanting more, wanting more. Right? You, you just like you were craving more. You're like, okay. And again, you know, Amazon did the great thing, which is 
they release three episodes. Although here's a question: mm-hmm. the la- when they release um, seasons one and two, did they release it per episode, or did they release the entire season? I remember the first season being the whole season, right? And then when it came to se- season two, they did just as they did this time. They presented okay. the first three. And then after that, it was uh, episode by episode after that. Right. So we get yeah, the first fun. three. So it's a big, huge teaser, just like with Netflix with Stranger Things. So right. uh, uh, Rima and Paik have a hard time because it's over an hour every episode for them to cover on Strange Indeed on Podcastica Network. Right. But with us, we do everything episodically regardless because, you know, it, it's very hard just to jump in and like, oh, we're going to do all three. When we did the first season, we did it as a whole because we jumped in. We I watched everything all at once. Steve watched everything all at once. So right. we decided after that was like, well, we'll do it episodically. And we I've been doing that since very much similar to with Invincible because with Invincible, you want to watch everything and they drop the whole thing in one shot. Right, right. So we try to do it episodically. It, and It's interesting how um, – it's funny because everybody was always like, hey, you know, uh, did you watch this on Netflix? And, of course, you could watch the entire season. Yes. And then uh, Disney Plus, I think, was the one that really did it, especially with The Mandalorian, which was like, shit, now it's every week. Yeah. So it left you wanting to come back every week, and and I think all the streaming services have started learning. Falling like, suit hey, with it, yeah, yeah. and it makes exactly. more sense. I think what they try to do with Amazon is give you the taste. Here's a taste of what you need to. We have the first three episodes. Well, we might have twelve episodes total, but here's the first three. You got to wait for the other nine per week after this. <laughs> exactly. So, so. Uh, you know, grab your kids if it's a family event. I don't know why anybody would make the boys a family <laughs> event, but what have you. <laughs> Same thing with Invincible. Uh, some people do it with Netflix. Uh, and, exactly. You know, no, it, you know, it's a great show. Rima even says it when they were doing with, uh, with when they did Dexter New Blood. She said mm. she was grateful for the fact that they were doing it weekly. Right, because right. it was HBO Max, uh, they kind of dropped everything. Not everything, but they dropped the first episode. And then you were like, awesome. So you would have to fight for that time to get there per week. Like Correct. a regular episodic show on regular TV. That yeah. we're And so I think Netflix to. is going to start. Yeah, Netflix, I think, is going to start doing the same thing because... Again, you know, we were always used to seeing something episodic every week, mm-hmm. and we would talk about it every week, but Netflix came around and said, hey, here's the whole season. And what do we do? We'll talk about it. We'll come back to work, and we're like, hey, did you see the entire season of this? And or that? some people and was, wouldn't, and then some right. people would, and then but you get to the point it, where it's like, all right, well, what's there to talk about now? Exactly. Not only that, but it, it, it was so forgettable because you're like, all right, I watched this entire season that was, I don't know, two, like three weeks ago. I'm already forgetting about it. I'm on to the next so, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's more like, hey, now we're doing episodic where it keeps you thinking about the show week after week. And I think they did that. Did they did, did they did really well with Mandalorian mm-hmm. doing that? Yes. Yeah, I think they did. Um, uh, I think all the Disney shows doing that actually, you know, kept. I remember coming back to work every week and we would talk about the latest <laughs> yeah. episode. You know, and that was the whole thing. You know. Um, it took me back to the days of uh, X Files when X Files was uh, yeah. first came out, which was such a great phenomenon. And you hear everybody at it work was water is like, "Dude, talk. did you? Yeah, did you watch the latest X File? And did you see this? I can't wait for the next one and this and that." And it was just like, and of course, back then there used to be, you know, uh, like twenty four to twenty six episodes in a, uh, a in a season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was you know it was a lot, but you know it kept you talking about it throughout the entire year, and then you got to wait two months. Yeah, eh, which was nothing. Now, you know, you, you do an entire season like Netflix would do an entire thing, and now you're waiting an entire year. Yeah, and you kind of forget about it. And until it comes back, and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. Now shit, now I got to go back and watch. To see what happens, because I don't remember it. Of course, because you <laughs> saw it all in one shot, and then you have the entire rest of the year to forget about it. But yeah. the way they're doing it now, I think it's great. Where that you know, it's every it's every week. It keeps you l- 
it keeps you looking forward to you know watching something <laughs> so yeah. yeah so this is actually very good i mean definitely great on that all right awesome yeah did you uh wa- did you want to do the the quotes because i had some good quotes uh, if you want to do quotes go ahead i don't have any so if you, you don't have yeah, any let me t- it's funny because there was a few of them that i liked uh you know uh in the beginning when they were uh, in the movie, that movie that was like, guess this means we're breaking up, you Nazi bitch. <laughs> you know, <that> <laughs> it was just that he said it so heroically. <laughs> and uh, oh, and, and when you were talking about A Train, that he was taking a picture on the red carpet, yeah. And he goes, "Who are you wearing?" And he goes, "I have no idea." So good, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and then Huey and Nadia would like also like you know like we were just talking about like when they uh you know how close they are and stuff like that and when they're having lunch all the time and she goes you love that bagel so much you're gonna fake herpes <laughs> and then when she had, oh, takes yeah. a bite out of it she goes oh my god so worth the herpes <laughs> uh, yeah yeah right <laughs> Oh man! And then uh, what was the other one? We don't need a master race. I am the master race. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot about that. Oh my god, there's so yeah. many good ones in this. <laughs> yeah, there there was a few good ones, and then uh, the other one I had like I ain't what is it? I ain't bang the blue. Oh, this was Butcher saying to um his boss. Uh, what's the lady's name? The one that's taking care of. Um, oh, I forgot her name. I forgot her name, but he goes, I ain't bang the blue hair since I was a lad. And then she goes, calling you an asshole is an insult to all assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, they, has a, they had a few good ones in there. That I was like, okay, especially a butcher because he has that very heavy. Um, is, is he supposed to be English? Billy is definitely English. Even though, oh, he is. Even though Cole Urban is a New Zealander. He's a Kiwi. Right, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they, I guess he's whoever the writer of the show is very good, I guess. And I don't know, maybe somebody out there will be able to like, you know, uh cor- you know, send, you know, send in an email or something on this or what or get in contact with you, but is everything butcher saying slang that's that is true coming, to English? That's true to English, yeah, you know, cuz I I've been told by my friend the other Mark Kirkman that lives in London or Essex, <laughs> right. England, and he he works in London. He had told me he was, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, very okay. Cockney as it is. He goes. He goes. That sounds like East End, London. Oh wow. Okay. But yeah, no. It's it's really good. I mean, there are times that like I have to put on the uh, closed caption because I'm like, what the fuck did he just? <laughs> yeah, I, it's and I have to go. I have to go back and read it. it it's literally. It's like if you grew up in a hood in London. That's what it would Correct. sound like. Yeah. But no, a, it, a lot of nowadays, it would be bruv. Bruv. What's bruv? This? Yeah, like, and oh, brother. Okay. Bruv. Hey, bruv. Right, right, right. Uh, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, or kind of Ted Lasso-ish, where it's like, fuck no. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, right. and in Butcher's case, it's always cunt this, cunt that. And there yeah. was actually an issue, too, and I'm, I'm sorry if people are offended, that are listening if I'm using the C word all the time just then. But the thing is, is that that was a constant thing and it still is a constant thing. So it's not to be taken harshly by a woman. If you, you're, you're, you know, if you call a guy the C word or con or whatever you want to call it, it's just, honestly, it's just their way of how they talk. Yeah, exactly. Very much like how my family, when I would work with them in construction, and I'd be like, hey, asshole, get over here. And, right. and I'm like, you talking to me? No, the other asshole. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah. to me, it's like, okay. Yeah, it's just how they talk. So, hey, listen, I grew up in the Bronx, and um, uh, it, we all use the N-word so much. Oh, yeah. and, it was never, <laughs> and, and it was never towards a, uh, a thing where, a like, you know. It was a derogatory term. No, yeah. it's like everybody, everybody was, you know, everybody. You called everybody Whether the N-word. Whether you were white, just, you know, Hispanic, <laughs> black, didn't matter. Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Female, male, baby. Anybody. Uh, <laughs> I know. My, my grandmother. I don't care, you know. <laughs> It was just, you know, one of those things that it was done. And, you know, I understand that people nowadays get, you know, offended because, you know, it was it's a very offensive word. 
but yeah, like you were saying, you know, using that C word over there, it's more like just a slang as opposed to anything else. Yeah. But yeah, was, uh, you know, I'm glad you cleared that up because his way of like, you know, his dialogue, I was like, is it, is it, I mean, he's doing a really good job yeah. at, you know, uh, with the slang and everything. But I was just wondering if he was, I, th- I was wondering if he was English and it just came off that easy. But nah. I guess, you know, I guess Urban is just a great actor. No, he, he he's New Zealand. He's from New Zealand. Right. So uh, it, he actually got his start, of all things, on Hercules and Xena. Did he really? <laughs> yes. Holy he, shit. He played Aphrodite's son in uh, a Xena episode. So oh, he was wow. kind of pretty faced with the hair and everything else right. too. It's funny how I've seen a lot of movies and I was like, "Holy shit, I didn't realize he was in that." You know, everything from uh he did one of the Reddick uh, you know, Vin 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 Diesel Vin Vin Diesel. <laughs> Vin, Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was I got tongue tied there. Uh, yeah, the Vin Diesel uh, Vin Diesel uh Reddick movies. Yep. He was also in one of those. In one of the Bourne movies that he was also in, yeah. you know, so like you, like you, like so many movies out there that he's in, and you're like, holy shit, you know, he's very I com- versatile. I so- yeah, I completely forgot that he was in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I was like, holy shit. Yeah, he was. <laughs> so- Actually, I think my friend Anwen <laughs> probably was on set with him for Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, probably okay, because <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she's a, a New Zealander herself, so she actually was yeah. uh, an extra. So she, I, I know she was behind Viggo Mortensen at one point. In a oh, scene, okay. which is pretty funny, but yeah, it, it's uh, New Zealand is very popular for that. You know, Ash versus the Evil Dead was filmed there, as well as Hercules, right. Xena, and actually, that's where a lot of the filming companies have been going lately. Between yeah, because you got uh, Peter Jackson that was involved with the the Rings movies, as well as the Hobbit, and right. then now with the new uh, Rings TV show that we're going to be getting. And that's being done in New Zealand also? I believe so. So okay. uh, there's a lot more going on. So, yeah. Uh, but we, we got some great actors from New Zealand. We got Lucy Lawless from there. We got right, Paul Urban, right. a whole bunch of them. But, you know, I would think that he went to a dialect coach and he probably oh. buddied up with somebody who was on tour with Iron Maiden or Motorhead and got realized, <laughs> got used to the idea. Because if you hung around right. Lemmy Kill Mister back in the day, and I met the man three times. I, he was yelling in my ear because he's deaf. Every time right. I met him and he thought I was in the band that was opening up for him. Uh, every time I saw him at the bar. But it, talking to the man, I got used to that because he could call me the C word every once in a while. Let me. <laughs> hey, cunt, give me this. <laughs> All right. Well, I was like, I need a Sharpie. Give me a. Give me. I need a light. Where's my. Cunt, where's my light? I was like, All right, here you go. There you go. But, uh, Thank you for calling me a gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, is that uh, he, I th- you would think that he'd been around a lot of English actors, English people, people on set right. over the years of, you know, Carl Urban's been working for almost more than like 28 years. Wow. I would say. Right. <laughs> and so he's got the experience of being around multi multiple people. He could do probably an American accent one, no problem. We've already seen that yeah. in Dread. Come on. I mean, you, you saw it in Star Trek. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bones. Bones. I, he was he the re- whitest of white people in that particular oh show or movie. When he when he started talking and he sounded just like uh, the real Bones from yep. uh, the original series, I was like, holy shit. He's the only one that, out of all the characters there. That reminded you of the original series characters correct. or actors. I mean, because Zachary Kinto, of course, was playing, you know, Spock, and you're like, all right, and he hung around with Leonard Nimoy, you know, to, I'm sure, to get tips and stuff like that, but everybody else just seemed to be doing... Their own thing. Their own thing? Yeah. <laughs> Urban was like, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna embody, you know, <laughs> <laughs> McCoy, the real McCoy. So. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you got your quotes. Um, we'll bypass uh, feedback because we didn't really get much feedback. I threw a, an image up there, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the night before before we start recording, unfortunately. Uh, right. it, nobody sent any email. Nobody sent any comments. But if we do get any regarding this particular episode, we'll actually talk about them in the next episode when we we'll record podcast recommendations uh do you have anything that you could recommend 
Rob, that uh, you've been listening to recently? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm always listening to a lot of podcasts. I mean, so much now, so that I barely, you know, listen to music now. But, <laughs> uh, but there's a few that I was thinking about. Um, so one of them, because of course I'm a, uh, I started getting back into comic books, and it's actually a really, really good uh, uh, podcast. Is Variant the Podcast? Uh, these two gentlemen, they cover, you know, yeah, they, just like us, you know, they cover pop culture, they cover anything that's, you know, f- geek fandom, anything like that. But they also cover, you know, a lot of, you know, what's coming out in comic books and, you know, and they really get into it. I mean, just like anybody else, just like us, you know, that we are big fans of these things. They actually, you know, do a good job on that. Uh, I also like to watch, um, uh, or watch, uh, listen to Star Talk, which is with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, cool! So it's it's it, not only does he talk about science, but he also has a always a comedian on the podcast, <laughs> and you know, so it makes talking about science fun. And actually, uh, you know, you laugh your ass off a lot, you know, with that. But uh, I met Neil deGrasse Tyson one time in person. One of the nicest people that you will ever meet. Oh, yeah. I mean, just such a great, um, such a great person, such a great gentleman on that. The other one I'd like to wa- uh, listen to is uh, the soundtrack show. Um, it's with David W. Collins. He's actually he was actually a, si- a sound designer for uh, Lucas Arts, and he's been doing some stuff for Lucas. But he is a big John Williams fan, but he also just loves film music. And in, if you could ever get a chance to listen to that. Highly recommend it, especially if you are a, a lover of a uh, of um, film music. He really gets into almost f- uh, music theory uh, when it comes to the th- like the theme. So he'll break down, like let's say the Star Wars, uh, you know, soundtrack, mm-hmm. and he tells you all these little things that are happening within the music itself. Oh and yeah, what does it mean, and all these things. And he, I mean, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, uh, sound designer so he listens to it and you learn a lot from that i mean i have learned so much from all these soundtracks and every time now i watch these movies i i remember what he says and um and of course i you know everybody i'm sure listens to you know fat man beyond with kevin smith you know so yeah uh (laughs) you know that's always fun what do you like uh lately i've been listening to uh of all things uh i would say tv podcast industries our friends out there out in Mm -hmm. ireland so we got oh, cool. Derek, John, and his crew when they talk about anything Marvel related. So they were covering uh, Moon Knight just as well as we did, Steve and I. But uh, they continue it a little bit further with the Disney Plus stuff with the uh, Assemble, the making of Moon Knight that just came out recently. They they're kind of on a break, but as soon as the new shows come out, like. She Hulk, Miss Marvel, everything else. They're gonna be in com- competition of what we're doing as well. Right. Uh, other than that would be Disgraceland that you can find on Amazon Music, which is amazing too, because he goes into the dark depths of Hollywood of people that have passed away or some interesting oh, things. Interesting. So uh the most recent episode that I got to listen to was about Judy Garland and her okay. issues with uh with pill addiction. And how she passed away, certain events that happened within her life. That was an interesting listen, uh, right. as well as so many others. You know, y- y- Jenna Elfman and Bodhi have their own particular podcast, like every celebrity couple does. <laughs> I listen to them. So it's usually uh, it's Elfman on Elfman, if you think about it. But it's just two people <laughs> are married, just like griping to each other, which I do oh, enjoy, wow. but it's pretty funny to listen to. Uh, the next would be, did you get my text with Patton Oswalt and uh, Meredith Salinger and Meredith and him are perfect. They just have a good time together and just to hear their banter about common <laughs> things and what they like normally and how things are misread in, in their Twitters. If you right. think about it, I think it's pretty cool. Oh, awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, next up for YouTube recommendations. Well, uh, I don't have the official site, but you could go to every one of these people. You could go to Malfunction. You could go to the Grim Life Collective. You could go to Adam the Woo or Scott on Tape. Now, mind you, all four YouTubers have been on each other's YouTube channel. 
And Mal hmm. uh, and Sean actually Sean Clark himself who does Malfunk Sean had put together kind of like uh, a dinner a dinner of five, but in this case a dinner of four, with all four YouTubers together and talking about their adventures in YouTubing. So I suggested <laughs> okay. highly. I thought it was funny because it, it just kind of reminded me of John Favreau's show that he used to have on HBO or Showtime at that point when he had a bunch of celebrity guests, but in this case. Sean has done this with all four YouTubers themselves. Oh, and nice. I'm guessing having things. It's like, hey, have you been ever arrested being on a film set? <laughs> uh, have you been asked to leave? What was your most right. weird experience? And and then going to see them on each other's channel because they've been pretty much jumping into each other's channel and doing right, right. Uh, a group thing of like, the uh celebrity uh if you go to the cemeteries that are out in california for celebrities right. uh, they they go there and they look at a few people's gravestones and they talk about their experiences of meeting them in life or things that they've encountered or what they knew which is kind of trivia based upon these people and showing a lot of respect to those particular actors cool so i had a good time i, I love watching them so uh think as your takeaways, listeners, Adam the Woo, <laughs> Malfunction, or The Thing with Two Heads, uh, that's another podcast, or Scott on Tape, or The Grim Life Collective, who we all know Michael and Jessica from. Right. On my side, um, I, wa- I like to watch, this is one uh, YouTube channel that I like a lot called The Corridor Crew. The Corridor Crew is actually a, um, a visual effects company, but they do YouTube videos, and they analyze stunts in movies they analyze you know um uh, visual effects from other movies and it is a fun and I, this is not like a geeky geeky you know like oh you know or very technical they, they, i mean they can get there yeah but they do so many things that are fun that it makes me want to just go over there and apply to their you know like listen i'll be a janitor <laughs> here because you guys seem to have fun on everything you guys yeah, do we, i just want to so, hang around i'll mop the floor in the yeah. background and i'll say something from the side hey how you doing <laughs> but they they seem to have you know they always have these challenges that they do with each other you know it's like hey can we remake a let's say a visual effect that was done i don't know 20 years ago nowadays mm. and back then of course it took you know an entire building of cray computers, you know, trying to, you know, crunch numbers to do this effect when now you could do it through an iPhone, you know, that kind of thing. So, or very much they, like a, a volcano, actually. Um, uh, I fr- I'm forgetting which uh, Japanese director had done it, but they recreated it later on in years. Le- it was a volcano erupting, but they did it in water. And the way they were right. able to do this was take a bunch of different liquid charcoal mm-hmm. and dump it in water, but it would be filmed upside down to show, right. and then it would implement it on and put it over a matte screen. Oh, okay. And, I see what you're and saying. And they do that, and that's the way they were able to get these kind right. of effects, because you can't have access to a volcano, obviously. <laughs> and back then in the 60s. Really, we didn't have visual effects the way that they are today. Exactly. So, yeah. So, they do the same thing. They always have, actually, uh, guests on. So, like, uh, either stunt people that worked in real movies. We're talking about, like, you know, the Marvel movies or any of the uh, Star Wars uh, films. You know, they talk to... They, they've had Adam Savage come on their show. Oh, cool. I mean, they really, really get some really good um, people. They've had, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, John Favreau. I mean, like I said, they get all kinds of people on their show. And they sometimes sit in front of a couch and they just watch these things. And as a matter of fact, the last one I just watched, they were actually making fun of Transformers. Because as much as they loved the effects for Transformers, they caught this one little mistake. <laughs> and they went over it and over it and one of them was saying no but that's because that's a youtube stream so they went ahead and they bought the actual you know Movie. amazon stream and stuff <laughs> like that it's like oh my god it is really a, a mistake you know so it's really funny well, to actually see uh, honestly um, it, it's a human thing you know you yeah, have to realize no, movies are made by humans it's not a 100 percent perfect if it was 100 exactly, percent perfect so we wouldn't be human <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And the other ones, you know, um, you know, the other two actually I already mentioned through, uh, you know, through podcasts, which they also but they also have their, you know, their uh, 
their uh, YouTube videos. Uh, so Variant, the podcast has one called Variant Nation. Mm-hmm. So it's it's almost the same thing, but they also have other episodes that they just do for YouTube. Uh, and they'll talk about comic books. They'll talk about, hey, let's talk about this one character, uh, you know, like Superman and, you know, and where his how strong is Superman and his weaknesses. So they go through that. You know, there's actually a, a kid named uh, Eris Quinones or something like that. He does a really good job on that. Uh, Nerdist.com, of course, everybody I'm sure is familiar with Nerdist.com. So I'd love watching that uh, the YouTube videos on that. Get a lot of insight on things that I didn't even know. And, of course, Fat Man Beyond, which... His podcast and the YouTube video are basically the same thing. They are, yeah. It's yeah. literally just, it's literally uh, Kevin and Mark doing their thing all the time. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah. Though, I mean, I mean, I got a ton more, but I mean, it, it would take way too long to uh, list them. But yeah, those are like <laughs> the four I recommend right now. All right, cool. All right. Well, with that, uh, to submit your feedback for this particular podcast, we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you have. And obviously, you're hearing us there. So please suggest a friend. Eh, That's the best (laughs) way for us to get around these days. So if our ratings are available for those platforms, preferably Apple Podcasts, please give us a rating if so. And just be honest. Uh, Be very appreciative. Uh, you can check out our website, which would be panels to pixels Uh Still under construction, obviously, and I already mentioned this before. It will be done by the end of July. Uh, with there, you'd be able to get all the regular feeds. You could actually attach it and send it to other people if need be. Uh, you could reach us at Facebook.com. So that's the best place to get us, Facebook.com slash panels to pixels Literally, I put the image up the night before we started recording this so uh we did the wallpaper we did the image and for you to send in feedback but if you want to send feedback for this particular episode just send it and then we'll read it play it on the next podcast and like i said all you have to do is send your email to panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels two is spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com you could write out a regular texted email or you could record your voice and send it as an attachment we'll play it we'll comment as we're listening as well and if you send the email we just as your facebook comments we will read them as well as you know while we're actually on the podcast uh you could send us uh on twitter as well so we're on twitter at panels two pixels at panels and the number two pixels so you could check us out there we are on YouTube, so you could find us on YouTube, and all you have to do is search Panels to Pixels Podcast. And just please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you just search for Panels to Pixels, you get the you get Josh from England. And he does everything <laughs> based upon uh, Marvel and everything else, and we love Josh. But we're Panels to Pixels Podcast, so do that in your search. And just uh, subscribe and like. Uh, we are on Instagram at Panels to Pixels Podcast. Spelled out just as is. So uh, with that, check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Online Podcast Radio Network. Uh, we highly recommend them all, but especially Wilhelm, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, as well as Panels to Pixels Podcast. So all you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check us out there. Uh, Wilhelm, I believe that Ben has a few interviews set up, so check them out. The voice actor from Red Dead Redemption will be up by the time this is up. So check out uh, Ben's interview with him. and That should be exciting. Yeah. So uh, coming up next week, obviously, we'll be continuing our coverage of The Boys Season 3. And uh, that will happen on next episode. Following that will be our 200th episode. So, uh, fingers crossed on our celebrity guest that will be on for that. Congratulations on that 200 episodes. That's actually, that's a great milestone. Yeah. It's it's almost five years. (laughs) If not, maybe a little bit longer. I'm thinking it's more than five years at this point. (laughs) Wow. But no, hey, great. That's awesome. We've been doing this, but uh, that's thanks to uh, the one Steve Brown himself, who is doing two episodes per month, or a week, I should say, not month, two episodes a week for at least six months without me by his side. So 
<laughs> now we're going to be tripling that with all the other content we're getting. So we might be pulling from our friends to be on those particular episodes so we can get three episodes a week, which is going to be oh, scary. <laughs> we'll be busy bees. That's a full-time job. It is a full-time job. <laughs> uh, my body will be killing me, and so will my brain. All right, so where else can listeners hear you, Rob? Uh, well, I, uh, you can listen to me in Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. So uh, we are on all the uh, podcasting, uh, uh, you know, um, devices or, you know, uh, apps out there. So, yeah, come and listen to us. We have fun with uh, trying to analyze bad movies. Not bad movies. I would say <laughs> overhyped movies that didn't make it in the box office or critically. And so we analyze it. And then, of course, as the title says, we put our own fantasy we do our own fantasy picks, whether it's cast or uh, director or story, to make it better. So yeah, we play we play filmmakers, even though we're not. So <laughs> well, you, you play the what if I could change this movie to something I like? Exactly. So if we could change That's the a- actor, change the script, maybe change the music a little bit, and exactly. uh, the and make director it a little better, make it a little yeah, bit. Oh, exactly. It's like we didn't need, need Jerry Bruckheimer. We we just get the other guy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been on that it's particular one- podcast too, and I enjoy it. It's yeah. fun. As a matter of fact, I just released uh, part two of the the last one that we did, which was uh, Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. Uh, probably one of our best episodes. We had so much fun in that episode. Uh, I don't think we've ever laughed as much as uh, <laughs> <laughs> as we did on that. It was but yeah, fun. But catch that was, us if you can. That was thankful to Zach. So Zach, uh, was, Zach great. was great on that. <laughs> yeah. So I told him, I said, "Man, you should be doing this full time." But yeah, you could catch me there. I mean, that's the only spot I'm in. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, as always, you all could hear me on the Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. That could be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network, just as well as uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition as well with Rob and guests. So uh, the last episode that I just uploaded that you should be able to hear in your ears will be Uncharted with Rob. So we covered <laughs> Uncharted 2022. So that's out now. So check that out. Uh, next up to come out this week will be Beneath the Planet of the Apes. So we're continuing our apes saga with Jerry and I. Following that, we'll be doing The Angry Red Planet, which we'll be recording probably within the next two days. So uh, you can hear Jerry and I do that. And beyond that, uh, probably Jason X and a few other movies that Jerry and I have planned in the works. When Steve gets back, we're probably going to cover Predator, the original because we're getting yet another sequel <laughs> or prequel, oh, as it God. were. Is it really? Are they doing um, yeah. some kind of prequel or yeah. something? Wow. Yeah, so uh, we're going to co- start covering the Predator movies, finally. We already tapped the <laughs> Aliens movie. We did Alien, we did Aliens. We didn't right. do any of the Aliens yet. Yeah, so check nah. out Adrenaline Cinema Podcast and the Pyrocore Entertainment Network, as well, Fantasy, Fantasy Picks Movie okay. Edition. So uh, just go to PyroCoreEntertainment.com and check out the links for that and just subscribe and check that out on all the platforms that we're on. So with that, that is our show. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I am Mark. And I am Rob. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good to see you. See ya, everybody. See ya.